The first letter is of great interest to educators and historians. In the first letter, she describes the secrecy with which she went about uh, founding her first school for children in Cove Lane in Cork. Because of the restrictions of the penal laws at the time, she had to be very careful. And she was concerned that she would bring attention not just to the schools, but to her own family, and particularly to her brother and to her uncle. But she managed to avoid that and worked quietly for a number of years, slowly spreading the number of schools that she had. Um, the speed with which education grew in her schools in Cork was really quite remarkable. And the other thing that's remarkable is that once the presentation convent schools started to be founded, they grew and expanded very quickly. Uh, they expanded across the country here in Ireland. And then in 1833, for the first time, Nano's legacy abroad becomes evident uh, as Galway Presentation Sisters leave and go to Newfoundland to make a foundation there. From then on, it moves very quickly. In the 1840s, 1850s and 60s, we have Irish women going to India, uh, to the Dakotas, to parts of Australia, and the congregation spreads, providing schooling to tens of thousands of girls in the century that followed. So for many historians of education, what is really interesting about the Nanonagel collection is that it's the starting point for a massive education legacy.